One of the things that will be very helpful in terms of uh, analyzing Android applications for vulnerabilities is the ability to decompile the application back into its source code. Uh, with Java and languages that are similar to Java that compile into a bytecode that is run against a, a virtual machine, it's possible for us to reverse the compilation process to turn the bytecode back into something that resembles the original source code. Now, the matching won't always be perfect. You will lose some information typically from it. However, most of the important pieces are going to still be there. And since those pieces will be there, we'll be able to um, not only understand what the application is doing, but actually be able to see the source code and be able to pick out specific vulnerable aspects that we want to be able to work with. So in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can reverse, uh, reverse engineer essentially or decompile an application. So there's a lot of different ways that people will typically use to do this. Um, there are tools like APK tool and uh, JD that will allow us to um, essentially uh, decompile the application and then reverse it back into Java code. Um, I actually use one called uh, JADX. J -A -D -X. Um, and again, I'll put links to these inside of a, a resources section, but um, inside of here, there's um, essentially in the bin, there's a GUI that we can launch. When we launch this, we're able to actually decompile any APK that we may have on our computer. So I'm going to come into our directory here and I'm going to grab the uh, Diva application that we installed and I'll run this through the decompiler. And what you'll see here is that we'll get a set of source code and the set of resources that are used inside of this application. When you're first looking at an application, there's a lot of different information that's valuable to us. The manifest file is one that's going to be extremely useful. Um, it's going to tell you a lot of different things, such as the permissions that are used by the application. It will tell you what activities exist inside of the application. It will tell you about intents. Um, it will tell you about things like uh, uh, content providers and such if they exist. Um, it will tell you what versions we target. Um, it will give you a whole plethora of uh, high level information that will allow you to better understand the attack surface that you're working with. So this is one file that would be very useful for us to be able to look at. Uh, resources are going to be a lot of like the, the graphical interfaces and such that you're going to be working with. Um, a lot of this really isn't particularly useful. I don't think um, most of the time this is just sort of like, uh, you know, sort of trivial information that comes from this process. Um, the meta inf will tell you different information. There's some certificate details that are um, sometimes potentially helpful, um, as well as the manifest file, which uh, could tell you a little bit of valuable information, potentially gives you a bit of a layout of um, all the things that exist inside of uh, like the res folder. And um, uh, it will allow you to get a bit of an understanding behind like the contents of, uh, of the manifest, for instance. And then we also have this lib folder, and this lib folder has any sort of shared object libraries that are used inside of the application. These are typically written in C or C++ and compiled. These can't be uh, decompiled. What we can do with these is we can analyze like strings that may exist inside of them. We might be able to break it down into um, something that might be able to tell us some information about the shared library or shared object. but. Um, a lot of the time, these are things that we won't be able to necessarily dig into too deeply. But you'll see in a few examples, we actually can go through these and gain some form of relevant information. And then finally, we have our actual source code files, which are the actual source of the application itself. Um, if you take a look at these, you'll be able to see like each of the different pieces that goes into building the actual application itself. So you can pull up any of the code that actually exists, and you'll be able to see exactly what code is being used. You can do this sort of thing with all, I would say basically any Android application and you should be able to get source code unless it's like heavily um, encrypted or um, obscured in some way. Uh, this will typically be possible. So a few other things that are useful for this, um, we can search this for specific keywords. So for instance, if we find like an error message or something like that, that we want to look up, um, we can try looking that up. We can try looking up common things like password. So you want to check off like what you actually want to search. You can search classes, you can search methods, fields, uh, code, for instance. And you can see here, we can sort of like pick out pieces of information that might be of interest to us. So. Um, here's an example here where we're inserting into SQL a user, um, a username and a password, it seems. So uh, this, for instance, would be some information that we might be able to gather from decompiling the application. So 
this gives you a bit of an idea of how we can actually decompile Android applications. And from here, we sort of have all the tools that we're going to need to have to be able to um, analyze different applications to be able to look at common Android vulnerabilities. So that's what we will take a look at next.